Well, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We're swapping stories about Fiesta over the last yes. 10 days or so. A lot <laughs> is going on. We're now in the post-Fiesta haze for sure. Good morning, yeah. everybody. It's Monday, May 1st. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yes, Fiesta wrapped up the month of April. April wrapped up pretty quickly, and now we're headed to the warmer weather. We are. Uh, things got very warm very quickly yesterday. It did. Very pleasant out there this morning, Justin. It's a nice start. We've got low humidity, but this is kind of our one day here where we have low humidity humidity because it's all going to go away. Uh, humidity is going to surge back in and it's going to feel more like May the next couple of days. Uh, let's take a look at uh, rainfall. I want to mention this because we did get some good rainfall, right? Friday night came with some severe weather, but good rain nonetheless. So since March 1st, we've had 6.06 .06 inches of rain and I can't begin to tell you how great that's been. This has put a dent, a small dent, but a dent nonetheless in our drought situation. We are actually above average since March 1st. Great to see. Now, if you look at uh, through January 1st, we're at 7.92, a little bit below average, but still doing okay for the month when you compare it to previous years. Uh, as we look at the forecast, 88 degrees this afternoon, mostly sunny. It's going to look pretty similar to yesterday. East southeasterly winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And uh, as we look at some of the headlines here, we can go outside for you. Beautiful morning, as you said. Last day of low humidity. Fog and drizzle return tomorrow with more cloud cover. And then we get an active pattern uh, by the end of the week. So it's it's going to feel a lot like May in many different ways. Uh, we'll talk more about that in our rain chances when they arrive coming up in just a bit. We'll head over to Stephen now and check in on the end of the morning commute. How's it looking? Uh, things look great over here, Justin. Uh, let's take a look at 281 at Grayson. Not a bad shot. You know, the morning has been a pretty quiet. It's been pretty quiet pretty much, but you can see behind me, we still have some folks that are making their way on out. Notice some of those long shadows. So uh, Mike mentioned it earlier and Justin would probably agree. Maybe take some sunglasses with you this morning. Uh, 410 at Harry Wurzbach. We did at least have one crash that was reported already cleared out folks and right now it's just uh, quiet roadways is what you can expect with some residual congestion as you can see along our map 35 southbound we're seeing that as people are making their way in from live oak as well as 1604 over on the northwest side near i-10 hey that's always expected there's a lot of road work that takes place out there so just remember to give crews a break and as a quick reminder over here off state highway 191 this work will take us all the way up until saturday in wilson county cable installation that begin uh, begins today and it should wrap around four in the afternoon but but we're going to continue to see this work take place up till May 6, alternating lane closures in both directions from the Bear County line to Standish Street. But scan this QR code. It takes you to our KSAT traffic page, and we've actually added something new to that page, a questionnaire. Uh, so let us know how this traffic or these, con these construction zones are impacting your commute. What creative ways have you found around it? We want to hear your solutions. And again, always good to know before you go. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting at a Northside business that happened just before 7 o'clock this morning. A sergeant told us that an employee arrived at work and saw a man trying to steal catalytic converters, converters and this happened on San Pedro Avenue near Bassey Road. The employee chased the suspect to a car lot next door, and that's when they got into a scuffle. They then went back to the parking lot where this started and continued fighting. At some point, they both got into their trucks, and that's when the suspect rammed the victim's truck. Police say the employee then shot the suspect in the leg, and that suspect was taken to the hospital for treatment, but he is expected to be okay. Here's today's 9 at 9. J.P. Morgan Chase is buying most of First Republic Bank's assets and assuming the lenders insured and uninsured deposits. This comes as First Republic becomes the third U.S. bank to fail since March. It's also the second largest bank failure in the nation's history. The FDIC took control of the embattled bank and arranged the deal. Hundreds of officers are searching for the man accused of opening fire inside a neighbor's home in Cleveland, Texas, north of Houston, killing five people, including a young boy. Authorities say they have zero leads as they conduct door-to-door -door searches for 38-year-old Francisco Oropesa. The city of El Paso has entered a state of emergency ahead of the immigration policy Title 42 being lifted next week. The city is anticipating an influx of immigrants when it expires May 11th. Migrants are already camping out on the sidewalks and staying in shelters in Ciudad Juarez, just across the border from El Paso. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot is calling on Texas Governor Greg Abbott to stop what she called the inhumane and dangerous action of busting migrants to her city. Lightfoot said her city has welcomed more than 8,000 migrants since August of last year, 
but says Chicago has run out of resources and shelter space to accommodate the migrants. Big changes are expected for the global job market. According to a report published by the World Economic Forum, 14 million jobs will disappear in the next five years as more companies adopt advanced technologies like artificial intelligence. The fastest declining jobs are secretarial roles, including bank tellers, cashiers, and data entry clerks. The battle or the debt ceiling enters the month of May. President Biden and most Democratic lawmakers want the debt limit raised with no spending cuts. Republicans are pushing forward with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's limit, Save and Grow Act of 2023, which raises the debt limit but trims the budget. Economic officials say the U.S. government will go broke by summer unless Congress boosts the debt limit. Another busy week of earnings reports on the way. Apple, Uber, Starbucks, and Ford are among the more than 160 companies in the S&P 500 that will open up their books in the next few days. Data tracking company FactSet says so far companies have reported first quarter earnings that were down by an average of 3.7%. The building boom across the country may be trouble for investors trying to figure out when the Fed will slow down its pace of interest rate hike. Some construction companies have enough work booked to last them years. That strength could drive the Fed to keep pushing interest rates up. Only two more days of early voting in the city's general election. Today and tomorrow, polls are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. To find your nearest polling location, just visit KSAT.com and also find a sample ballot to look at ahead of time. The mayor and city council seats are up for election, as is the much-talked-about Proposition A. The election day is on Saturday, and that's today's night at night. Good morning headlines, severe weather flipping cars and downing trees, and the owner of Drago, the famous bull pounded by large hail, is doing just fine. Plus, talk about a birthday bash. Willie Nelson turned 90 over the weekend, and the party lasted all weekend. David Sears is here with all of these stories. Not surprised that party would last oh, all weekend. It lasted all weekend, and some of the singers, the list, and the oh. songs they sang is like this long. It was amazing. We'll get to some of that in just a second for you, but first let's start with this. Let's start in Florida, dash cam video. Watch in front of you, let's see. There's a car flipping over. Several cars got flipped over. I'll show it to you a couple of times. Incredible, no word on the condition of anybody in those cars. The amazing thing that the car were in, nothing happened to that car. There were some SUVs down the road and nothing happened to those, just that smaller car that got tossed. That was Saturday in Florida. There was also a twister in Virginia Beach. That tornado ripped up trees, damaged about 100 homes. Two boys had to be rescued from high water in a tunnel. New York City got hit with some rain so heavy that some drivers had to sit several hours because of flooded highways. And in the Midwest, with all the snow melt, Mississippi River is supposed to start cresting today as the high water moves downriver. Some barge traffic has been stopped for the time being. Hey, no bull. Drago is okay. Remember last week we showed you this video of hail pounding a pool and the poor bull in the background? Well, we learned from the owner that the bull is okay. Gary Clayton shot the video of Drago headed for shelter when he started getting nailed with all those hailstones, but the big dude was able to find some shelter under a big pecan tree. Gary lives on hundreds of acres outside of Dallas, can see the storm coming. He figured Drago would be able to get to the, <laughs> the hail out of there. <laughs> And he did. He I knew the only shelter he really had were some trees, and that's where he was heading, was to, to get under some trees to kind of break the fall of the hailstone. So Drago and the rest of his buddies are all okay. See all of them out there? They're cool. It's like, yeah, we're good. They're like, what hail? What hail? <laughs> more than that, get us going. Hey, congratulations to Willie Nelson. Turned 90 over the weekend, and what a party some of his sends through for him over the weekend. 90 is such a big deal for the iconic singer. They had a two-night party at Hollywood Bowl. It included George Strait, Snoop Dogg, Neil Young, Dave Matthews, Beck, Chris Stapleton, Miranda Lambert, Cheryl Crow, the list goes on and on and on. Nelson himself took the stage with George Strait, Snoop Dogg, and Neil Young. All right, so Willie Nelson and Snoop Dogg, <laughs> they changed up the words of a song and went with, Roll me up and smoke me when I die. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. Okay, you can figure out what reference that is, dude. George Aww. and Willie teamed up for Poncho and Lefty. That had to be good. Miranda Lambert went with Mamas Don't Aww. Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. And Lyle Lovett sang, My Heroes Have Always Been Cowboys. I, that, that, that had to be one of the most incredible 
two nights you've Very ever special. seen. Yeah. Music, Everybody so. that was there. Happy birthday, yeah. and the, Willie. The, the cross section of people who know Willie, yeah. know what a great songwriter is. I mean, what is that, seven decades of, of performance? Yeah. I mean, Here people from all genres. 90 years old and no yeah. signs of slowing down. It's supposed to be on tour like this summer. Unbelievable. Wow. So 90 years young. He plays young. at Whitewater a lot. You know, the one up <laughs> yeah. there off of the three. Brussels. Brussels. Yeah, he plays up there a lot. Very cool. Happy birthday, Willie. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thanks, all right. David. 908, 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. It is Melanoma Monday, a day to raise awareness about skin cancer. In our next half hour, we're going to be speaking with a local dermatologist about the disease and how we can better protect ourselves. Plus... Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We only have two days left of early voting here in San Antonio. We're going to give you a quick preview. We're also going to show you what the polls are looking like here at Lions Field. We'll see you in a few moments. 912, welcome back. It's election season in and around Bear County. And if you want to vote early, you only have two days left. Tomorrow's the last day of early voting until Election Day. This Saturday, our Max Messi joins us live from one of the more popular voting locations in our area. That's Lions Field. And Max, how does it look out there? Good morning, guys. We've seen people trickling throughout the morning. I just talked to the election judge here, Ellen. Very nice, very patient woman. And she was telling me they had one of their biggest bursts of voters so far. Already 40 people this morning. And remember, it's only been open for about an hour and 15 minutes. So take a look. We're looking at the entrance here at Lions Field. And guys, there's a lot on the ballot this election, really no matter where you live. So here in San Antonio, we have the San Antonio mayor, the 10 city council members, and of course, Prop A. Now, Prop A, we know a lot of people want to do their research. We have the exact wording of the proposition right now. Just head to ksat.com. If you do come to the polls, make sure you come informed. And of course, like we've been talking about, thousands of people already taking advantage of early voting this election. Bear County elections, early vote count. It shows so far more than 57,000 people have voted so far. And like Stephanie said, we only really have two days left. Now I talked to Jackie Callanan earlier this morning. She told me that she expects today to be the largest amount of early voters so far they've seen. And speaking of the amount of people, we're gonna put two places on your screen. We got Brook Hollow Branch Library. That has been the most popular so far. More than 5,000 people voted there already. And the least busy, so if you do wanna get out there, you don't wanna deal with lines, although here at Lions Field we have no lines. Southside ISD, their administration building, only 41 people have voted early there so far. And of course, take a look at the screen. Here are the times, here's what you need to know. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., then election day is this Saturday. May 6th, and guys, I, I can't emphasize this enough. No matter where you live, no matter what municipality, there is so much on the ballot. You know, we've been talking about school bonds, hundreds of millions of dollars, and of course, the implications of your property taxes. So if you have questions, you don't know where, you don't know when, you don't know what to bring, just head to ksat.com. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. Max, I pulled up that sample ballot on our website. Guess how many pages it is? Uh-oh. Nine. I'm gonna say, okay. That I, I was going to say 11, so we were close. Yeah. <laughs> very, very close. So we have some homework to do. Yeah, just a little. Thanks, Max. Thank Bye. you, Max. Out live at Lions Field. Voting today and tomorrow, and then we head off into the election on Saturday. All right, some bright sunshine out there. Absolutely gorgeous. We've already gained a couple of degrees just in the last 15 minutes. It's going to be another one of those days where we go from a nice, cool morning to a very toasty afternoon. But it's uh, still sort of a dry heat. That changes. Oh, tomorrow. okay. Yeah, the humidity yeah. comes later. Uh, humidity comes in full force tomorrow and sticks with us for most of the week. Uh, we are officially, obviously, in May. So let's look at some of the May climatology. It is our wettest month. It is also the month in which we see the most severe weather. Uh, May 1st, we average 83 for high temperature, 62 for a low. And by the end of the month, look at that. We average 90 for a high, 70 for a low. The records are 42. That was set back in 2013. The coldest we've ever seen, the coldest temperature we've ever seen in May. And the warmest we've ever seen, 104, way back in 2003. So there's a little look at May for you. And as I said, we typically see the bulk of our severe weather in April and May. But May is our biggest month, and sometimes in early June too. But uh, this is where things really kind of get rowdy for us. And we do have some chances for some storms coming up later this week. Let's go outside for you once again. 68 degrees, dew point is at 52, northeasterly winds at nine, and dew points are still behaving themselves in the 50s. Pleasant out there with uh, some dew points even in the 40s still. 
uh, which puts us in the dry category for parts of the hill country. But that, that moisture is sitting right off the uh, Texas coast, and it's ready to surge back in here. It'll do so overnight into tomorrow. So by tomorrow, dew points are in the 60s. It'll feel muggy again. And from there, we only go up. So dew points make their way all the way into the 70s by Friday and Saturday. It will be very humid with no fronts in sight. So that means uh, a lot of sticky air uh, is going to be around. Uh, here's a look at the forecast for today. 77 noontime will be up around 88 this afternoon. We're going to call it mostly sunny. And there's your southeasterly wind starting to kick in 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then into tonight, we'll fall into the 80s, 82 at 8 o'clock, 77, 9 p.m. Here's the big picture. We've got a big area of low pressure up here across the Great Lakes. So a lot of rain. This caused severe weather yesterday for the East Coast. And, parts of Florida. Now it's just raining a little bit of snow on the backside there in the uh, upper peninsula of Michigan and uh, parts of uh, Wisconsin there. And then as you look west, not a lot of rain, but there is some rain uh, up there in the uh, parts of Washington. And that's part of an area of low pressure that's going to move south. So this is one that doesn't affect us directly, but it will send some disturbances around into Texas. And by tomorrow afternoon, we should get some storms out across West Texas. A few of those can make them make their way into our area. I don't think they make it to San Antonio. So we're just going to put in a 10% chance of rain out West. But as this thing keeps spinning, as we get into Thursday, we get a little better disturbance that'll roll through. And this is when I think we can get a pretty good shot at some thunderstorms, 40% chance. And then we've got to watch for the risk for some severe weather too. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center, in fact, has already highlighted an area. We're four days out, but they've highlighted this area across uh, West Central Texas that includes parts of our area for Thursday night. We'll be watching and uh, we'll certainly keep you updated with that risk. But right now, 83 tomorrow with some morning fog and drizzle. Be prepared for maybe a slightly damp commute. 83 Wednesday, 84 Thursday. We have put in that 40% chance of rain Thursday night into Friday. Some more chances on Saturday too uh, with temperatures closing in on 90. And on top of that, humidity is going to be high. So here we go. You know, we, we, here we, we, go. Here we go. We enjoyed a really pretty good April. Yes, uh, we with, did. Was, and Fiesta was fantastic, but it's uh, it's about that time. Have an odd primer for the month of May. I <laughs> yeah. know. Here we go. Here we go. Yep, here we, we go. go. Yeah. Okay. But it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 918, 69 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up next. The UTSA Film and Media Program is getting ready to host a film screening tomorrow. Hear from local students about the inspiration behind their films next. Local high school and college students will be showcasing their films at the second annual UTSA Student Film Screening. From comedy to documentary, there's something for everyone. T Tiffany Huertas joins us live from UTSA to talk more about this semester's films. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. So exciting. About 17 films will be shown tomorrow, and we have two bright students here, UTSA students Sila and Robbie from Northwest Vista College. Good morning to both of you. First, let's talk about this event. How special is it? Yes, this event is, um, event is so wonderful. Um, it's an opportunity for um, all of these really talented students to be able to showcase their work. And um, yeah, it's going to be really fun. We have narrative documentary. Uh, we have documentaries. We have narratives. Um, yeah, it's a wide genre variety as well. Mm -hmm. And for those wondering, why are we in front of this green screen? Tell us about what happens here. <laughs> yeah, so this is um, this is like an interview space, kind of a multi-purpose space. Um, we can shoot kind of whatever we want with the green screen. Yeah, it's very nice. A lot of great things happening here at UTS 8. Now, Ravi, tell us about your film. Yes, my film's about a guy who tricks the whole world and moves to Mars and only to reveal a secret truth. So come watch, us all, watch my movies on um, Santi Goes Palladium tomorrow, 7 p.m. What does it mean for you to have your film shown? Uh, it, I feel a uh, lot honored and everything, so uh, I feel a lot great uh, being here. Thank you for having me here. And uh, I say uh, students can do a lot better and uh, they have a lot of potential. So I want uh, every filmmaker, every filmmaking student there to just go for it. Just do whatever you can. Amazing. Now, Sila, tell me about your film. Yeah, so um, my film is about a couple who um, they, they um, have uh, sort of a, an emotional chasm that develops between them after um, a hidden positive pregnancy test. Um, it's a drama, and um, I'm really proud of it. Um, a lot of really incredible um, 
Uh, people worked on that film, um, the Sauce Productions, some of my best friends. And, um, yeah, it just means a lot to me to be able to share this film with everyone, with a full audience, on a big screen, um, and really showcase the hard work that so many individuals put um, into this film. So, yeah. It's an amazing film community here yes, in San Antonio. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't associate San Antonio with film, but there are a lot of really talented people here, a lot of amazing resources, um, and, yeah, it's growing for sure. Where can people watch? Yeah, so um, we are having a screening at 6 p.m. Um, that's when networking starts, where you can chat with um, the filmmakers, and there'll be movie posters, a red carpet. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I believe the uh, show starts around 7. But, yeah, at Santico's Palladium tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you both for joining us. We're going to talk to them a little bit more and from one of the teachers here at UTSA, but we'll send it back to you for now. Thank you, Tiffany. Right now, 925, 69 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including how a stray dog became a huge cuddle bug to those who need it the most. How his owner knew Neely was meant for much more. Plus our Q&A with a board certified dermatologist, Dr. Santa Oswald, about skin cancer awareness. She's going to explain some of the risks of the disease and debunk some myths about skin cancer. Look out there with live cans starting to warm up this morning. We started in the 60s and now we have hit 70. Uh, it's nice for now. Nice for now. You're right because humidity is going to be surging back in here by tomorrow. So it's going to feel a lot more sticky and, and hot and all that fun stuff this week. Hey, I want to show you a picture on our KSAC Connect. Uh, I first off, I want to say thank you to all the folks who came out and hang out with us during Fiesta Flambeau and Battle of Flowers. It was so much fun. We had uh, a lot of folks uh, hanging out with us in the, the KSAT 12 area, and this was uh, one area where you could take pictures, and uh, this was a picture submitted. And they said, we enjoyed the Fiesta Flambeau Parade with KSAT 12, but we enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for coming out. It was a lot of fun. Hard to believe Fiesta is now behind us, but here we go into May, and pollen count showing that oak season has pretty much ended. Uh, all we have to really worry about there is mold, and it's in the low category, 200. Uh, grass and pecan show up too, but they're very, very low. So we're kind of in a lull when it comes to the uh, pollen count as of right now. Uh, looking at the satellite picture, we do have some clouds trying to move in from the west, and so we'll have some high clouds, but that's, uh, that's about it today. 77 noontime, and we'll top out close to 88 this afternoon. Mostly sunny and a northeasterly breeze, anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. There are some rain chances we've got to talk about later this week. Maybe some thunderstorms, maybe some strong storms, too. We'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, sir. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer by the age of 70. It is the most common cancer in the United States. Yes, in most cases, is preventable. Today is Melanoma Monday, a day to raise awareness about skin cancer and a reminder to take extra steps in reducing your risk. Joining us live uh, online right now is Dr. Sandra Oswald, a board certified dermatologist and the chief of dermatology UT Health San Antonio's MD Anderson Cancer Center. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Well, first of all, tell us about skin cancer. What exactly is it and who is at risk? Wonderful question. You know, there are three main types of skin cancer. There's basal cell carcinoma, which is the most common, squamous cell carcinoma, and then, of course, melanoma, which is the deadliest form of skin cancer. And anybody can get skin cancer. However, those at increased risk includes those with light or fair skin complexion, red hair, skin that is easy to burn or sunburns easily, and those with a family history of skin cancer, um, it could be melanoma or any type of skin cancer. Even those with multiple atypical moles and melanoma in the family history can have increased risk. And then those, of course, who are chronically immunocompromised, like those who have had transplant or increased risk. But we do know that exposure to UV rays is the most important preventable cause of skin cancer. And watch out for those indoor tanning beds because that certainly increases your risk for all types of skin cancer. Dr. Oswald, what are some warning signs for us to remember? So what I tell people is that they should be looking at their skin. And if there is a skin lesion, let's say that is new or changing, perhaps one that isn't healing or is bleeding spontaneously, you really should get that checked out. And then for melanoma particularly, we have a tool called the ABCDEs. 
A is for asymmetry. If one side of the mole looks different from the other side, or B for border regularity. So if the borders look very jagged or irregular, color, say they have multiple shades of brown, or you could even have white, red, or blue colors in a mold, and that's not good. Um, so we want to make sure that you look at all of those things. Another thing is E, evolving. If you happen to see that you have a mole that is changing, we recommend you check your moles every month. You'll be the best one to detect any change. And if a mole is changing significantly, don't wait and get checked out. And how should we protect ourselves or reduce the risk? Well, fortunately, there's many ways to do that, many measures. One, of course, is to stay out of the sun, particularly during the hours of 10 to 4. And if you're outside, try to stay in the shade. Wear a big wide brimmed hat to cover your face and your ears. And you might want to wear some beautiful big sunglasses, even lip balms with have sunscreen in it. And then use that sunscreen, which should be both UVA and UVB. We call that broad spectrum, at least 15 to 30 and apply that every couple of hours, okay? And so we also want to tell you that you should put sunscreen on every day. You may think you're safe inside by a window or driving around in your car, but actually UV can go through the window so you can get UV every day. So make sure you use your sunscreen, make sure you apply it well, liberally, and make sure you reapply every couple hours because no matter what your SPF factor is, you're gonna lose some. Um, while you're walking around or sweating or doing your activity. It's so interesting. When I, in my first TV job, I did a skin, uh, I did a sunscreen test. Mm -hmm. And anything uh, less than 30, it was like I was wearing nothing at all. You're not <laughs> surprised by that, are you? Not at all, because there's many reasons why your sunscreen will work. And one of them is just how much you put on. You know, you really have to put on a good amount to get that protection they're asking you for. And um, so I'm not, I'm not surprised. Uh, Good help. job of doing it. <laughs> sure. Doctor, help us dispel some myths about skin cancer. Okay. Um, well, one of the myths is that people with dark skin types don't get skin cancer. And here in San Antonio, we have people with many different colors of skin. And we want to tell you that everybody can get skin cancer, even though those with light skin, I've told you, are increased risk, anyone can. And there's particularly a type of skin uh, melanoma that dark, people with darker skin types can um, get. And that one occurs on their hands and feet and on their nails. And because people with skin and color don't think they can get skin cancer because they don't burn easily, they will delay in coming in. And so unfortunately, people with skin of color with these particular types of melanoma can come in late or when their melanoma is already advanced. So we like to just make sure and know that everyone know that anyone can get skin cancer and everyone should get checked. Another myth is that only older people can get skin cancer. And actually the truth is that yes, older people get um, skin cancer and melanoma because of the cumulative effects, but melanoma is the most common cause of death in young women ages 25 to 29. And unfortunately they believe that may be because of indoor tanning bed use. And so we say no to tanning bed use. Please do not do indoor tanning because it increases your risk, not only of melanoma, but all types of skin cancer. And if and, you, uh, oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead, go ahead. Also, another myth is that you don't need to wear sunscreen in the winter on a cloudy day. And you may notice that you don't feel the heat of the sun's rays on you um, in the winter as much as you do right, like right now in the summertime. However, those harmful UV rays are present year round, and so you do need protection year round. Oh, I was gonna ask, and if you have skin cancer, what types of treatment are available? Uh, that's great. If you catch skin cancer early, and particularly melanoma early, you have um, the ability to have great prognosis. For instance, melanoma caught early stages, you have a 99% five-year survival rate with us just removing it by, by surgery. Um, but not to worry, actually at Maze Cancer Center and other places, now with advanced melanoma, we have more promising therapies for you. So what I do wanna say that even if your melanoma isn't early where we can easily just remove it, even if it is advanced or spread to other locations, we now have 
chemotherapy that is specific to melanoma mutations. We also have a large family of uh, treatments that are called checkpoint inhibitors that help your immune system, enhance your immune system to fight melanoma. So we want you to not be afraid to come in. We don't want you to delay. We want you to come in because we have promising therapies for you. All right, well, we're headed into the spring and summer months, so I'm so glad we, we covered all this. Dr. Sandra Oswald, Chief of Dermatology at UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Have fun and stay safe. Thank, thank you very you. much. Have a good rest of the week. Well, a problem that's been building for the past year has now become a major issue, a shortage of some very common medicines, often used for kids, but adults as well. As Courtney Friedman reports, a local pediatric hospitalist says it's not a reason to panic, but it's important to know what your options are. Moxicillin is used for bacterial infections like strep throat or pneumonia. Albuterol, used in nebulizers, helps with respiratory problems. Both used a lot for kids and both experiencing a big shortage that's been building for the past year. We had this national crisis of, of kids in the hospital and it going to clinics with infections. And so we really did see a bigger need for it. And so I think it just really stressed the system. So if you're a parent or you need these medications yourself, it is not time to panic. Don't worry. At these pharmacies, there are multiple backup options for each of these prescriptions. So amoxicillin is usually our go-to. We love amoxicillin in pediatrics. Dr. Dina Tom with University Hospital and UT Health San Antonio says once the shortage started, they moved to a similar antibiotic called Augmentin. But now there's a shortage of that too. The third option, good old penicillin. So penicillin can treat strep throat very well. It is, um, it doesn't taste horrible and it's a, it's a very safe, kind of cheap thing to do. So we can actually use that more than we realize. She emphasizes that antibiotics are only for bacterial infections. And most infections are viral. So, um, you know, keep in mind if your pediatrician's saying, let's just watch and wait and see if, it, if they really need it, that they really do have your best interest and your kid's best interest at heart. As for the albuterol, there's a similar medicine called Zopinex. That therapy has been what we've always uh, gone to in in a um, little bit of special cases because it has less side effects, but it's also more expensive. Dr. Tom also says regular inhalers work great too, so make sure to ask your child's doctor about which option would be best for them. That was Courtney Friedman reporting. And Dr. Tom also said if you get to your pharmacy and they are out of the prescription, they can call the pediatrician to send over one of those alternative medications instead. Right now, 939, 71 degrees. You're watching GMS at 9. We'll be right back. Look out there with live cam. Sun is out, 71 degrees. Uh, it's looking nice today. I'm just, um, I've been hearing rumors about the weekend and the humidity. <laughs> the rumors are true. Mm -hmm. They're true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is going to get warm. Uh, it's going to get humid. Uh, it's what you would expect in May. I think we kind of lucked out in April, honestly. We got yeah. quite a few fronts and it helped, and Fiesta was great, but now. We're headed into the heat and maybe some thunderstorms too. Let's take a look around Texas right now. Uh, there's nothing going on. Uh, we had the, the last storm system kind of come through and it, it's brought all the weather up across the northeast, but it's kind of cleared out the rest of the country. So we've just got a few high clouds that are coming through and that's all we got to worry about today. It'll be mostly sunny, uh, but well, let's take a look at the dew points. Right now we're in the 50s, 52. But I'll point your attention to Corpus Christi. Look at the dew point there, 70, near 70 in Brownsville. There's moisture gathering along the coast. That's going to surge in tomorrow. So as we look forward in time here, dew points jump up into the 60s by tomorrow morning and uh, even into the afternoon hours tomorrow. It will be somewhat muggy. Also leads to some fog and drizzle tomorrow morning. So you'll notice the changes on your way to work or school tomorrow. 67 Stinson, 68 at Kelly, 67 at Randolph. Right now we've got northeasterly winds still anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. And here's a look at the forecast for today. By noontime, we're at 77. We'll probably already see some 80s on the map at that point. And then by the afternoon, we top out in the upper 80s. So pretty much like yesterday. Yesterday was pretty warm. Today will be very similar. And places like Carrizo Springs will jump into the 90s. It'll be hot down there. Uh, we'll be off close to the 90 degree mark here locally. And as we look uh, towards the weekend, you heard Steph mention those warm temperatures. Yeah, we're going to be above average all the way through the forecast. And it gets downright warm by the weekend. 90 on Saturday, 89 Sunday. And that's with some thick humidity. So that's more summer-like for sure. 
Water vapor showing us we've got a spin here off the west coast. This is uh, an area I want to watch, not because it's going to move through. It won't have any direct effects on us, but uh, as it moves south, it gives us flow out of the southwest here across Texas, and oftentimes that can be an active flow for us. We get little disturbances that roll through, and that can create thunderstorms. By tomorrow afternoon, this is 5 o'clock tomorrow, we probably will see some storms across West Texas. There's always a possibility that some of those storms could scoot east into the Hill Country. I don't think we see anything here in San Antonio, but we are going to put in 10% chance for the Hill Country tomorrow late. Uh, and then we'll get another disturbance rolling out of Mexico, and that comes in on Thursday night. Timing's still a little bit in question here. We've got to iron that out, but as we get a little bit closer, we'll be able to do that. In general, though, I can tell you that we'll have a, a decent chance for thunderstorms, I think 40%. And there is a risk for uh, maybe a few strong storms that'll leak over into Friday. And then we may get a few more storms Friday afternoon and again on Saturday too. just with that uh, flow being the way it is. Here's a look at the risk for severe weather Thursday night in the Storm Prediction Center has already outlined an area. So this is kind of early for them to do that, but occasionally they will if they have a pretty strong confidence with, and there being some strong storms. So this is something we'll have to prepare for Thursday night. we got plenty of time to do it, right? Uh, but just a heads up, uh, we've put in a 40% chance of rain Thursday night into Friday. Otherwise, 83 tomorrow, morning fog and drizzle, then that small chance of a storm out west. Mostly cloudy, humid Wednesday, 83, 84 Thursday. You see the chance of storms here. And then uh, temperatures really do jump up. Friday, 88. 90 on Saturday, uh, 89 Sunday. We do have another chance for storms showing up on Saturday. Guys. Thank you very much, Justin. One dog went from being abandoned to a certified therapy dog, and it's all thanks to a San Antonio police officer. Pause for service therapy dog Neely and his owner, Officer Jason Hoekstra, now volunteered to help bring joy to the community. Sarah Costa introduces us to the therapy team and how their work together goes way beyond the badge. Neely is a Rottweiler Bull Terrier mix and is a big teddy bear who just wants to snuggle and give kisses. And he gets to do it for a living now as a certified therapy animal through the local nonprofit Pause for Service. But it wouldn't have been possible without his owner, San Antonio police officer Jason Hoekstra. When I was in training at the academy a couple years ago, Neely showed up on the grounds as a stray and uh, he was out there for a couple weeks and I told my wife I'm like we got to save that dog. Hoekstra rescued Neely but soon realized Neely had a calling. One day I noticed you know I'd come home after a long day at work I'd sit down on the couch Neely would just kind of sit up next to me and kind of snuggle in and I thought man this dog's got a purpose. Neely sit, sit. Good, good sit. After going through weeks of training, Hoekstra and Neely became a certified volunteer therapy team for Pause for Service. It's wonderful to see him. So, you know, we walk through the doors at our, at our senior facility where we're assigned and, uh, and their faces just light up. Officer Hoekstra and Neely have been certified with Pause for Service for about a month, but they hope to spread joy throughout the community for years to come. Hoekstra even takes Neely once a week to SAPD's Wellness Center, where they visit with officers. Hoekstra says he has always loved to volunteer in his community, and he hopes when people see his badge with Neely, it can make a positive connection. Present that as an extension of, of my work, um, just kind of places a human element to the badge and, you know, can help help others see that that yes, we're we're humans, we're individuals too, um, just like them. And Neely is a is a great conversation starter as well. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Someone's getting kisses. Oh, he's cute. Sweet dog. 948, 72 degrees. When we come back, a look at the preps underway for the coronation of King Charles III and some controversy surrounding the big day. You will bring Captain Solo and the Wookiee to me. The re-release of Star Wars Episode VI Return of the Jedi in fewer than 500 theaters made $4.8 million, good enough for fifth place. John Wick Chapter 4 stayed in fourth with $5 million for a domestic total of $176 million. Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret debuted number three with $6.8 million. I can't believe I'm never going to speak to you. Evil Dead Rise took in $12.2 million for a second straight, second place finish. Four straight weekend wins for the Super Mario Brothers movie. $40 million gave the video game adaptation a domestic total of $490 million as the film passed the billion dollar mark in worldwide box office. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
Across the pond, the countdown is on to King Charles's coronation. And as ABC's Lionel Moyes reports, while the excitement is building, so is the controversy. With just five days to go into the coronation of King Charles and Queen Camilla, royal superfans are already lining up. What we're, we're doing for king and country. More than one million people are expected to line the streets of London, but only 2,000 special guests will be inside Westminster Abbey Saturday for the event. Prince Harry will be there, but his attendance will be brief. Maybe even just 24 hours in the UK as he flies in, attends that coronation ceremony, skips everything else afterwards and gets on a plane straight back to L.A. Preparations well underway for the big day with more than 7,000 military personnel participating in dress rehearsals over the weekend. And with so many people coming to town, businesses are taking advantage, rolling out themed merchandise and experiences. Even Legoland is getting in on the fun, creating this tiny version of the coronation complete with a replica of Buckingham Palace. And women from a small village outside London and came up with their own way to celebrate, creating this knitted version of the event. We are showing that, that we are sort of supporting him in, the, in one of the few ways that we can. But amid the excitement, controversy. In an unprecedented move, during the coronation, the Archbishop will ask the public tuning in to vocally pledge allegiance to King Charles and his successors. Critics call the oath offensive and tone deaf, pointing out that it asks people to swear allegiance to Prince Andrew, who despite being stripped of his royal titles, is still technically a successor. The cost of the coronation also raising eyebrows. It just doesn't sit quite right. Reportedly costing taxpayers $125 million as the public faces a higher cost of living with historic inflation. They could be paying for it themselves. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. They thought it cost more than that. Well, now, while not everyone is happy about the cost of the coronation, the big event is very good for business. It is expected to generate more than $1.7 billion in economic activity. All right, let's get a final look at weather with uh, Justin, who's converting his forecast to Celsius to honor the king. There you go. Right. <laughs> Not. Uh, <yeah. laughs> I wish our forecast looked like London's forecast. Right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 88 degrees uh, today, mostly sunny. There will get some morning fog, and so that's a little London-ish uh, yeah. tomorrow morning, uh, but then 83 by the afternoon. Small chance for storm out west. 83 Wednesday, 84 Thursday. There is a decent chance for some storms sometime Thursday evening, between Thursday evening and Friday morning. That's a time frame we'll be watching because there could be some severe weather, and they were close to 90 this weekend with another chance of storms. So uh, very May-like. Not that far apart, actually. I just checked London right now, mostly mm -hmm. cloudy and 64 degrees, but they're still getting nights in the 40s and lower 50s. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I'm Sounds sure they, nice. won't, they won't have 90 this weekend, I'm sure. Yeah, and the humidity is no. only, <laughs> only 56%, so there's a difference uh, too, right? Yeah, when it gets to like 80 there, the people mm -hmm. start getting restless, so yeah. yeah. And okay. you can Imagine. explain Celsius to more tomorrow, okay? Yeah, we'll do that. Thanks. Right. Tea and scones <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>